As you look at the needs uh, of Israel right now and consider what we have available, what is it that the U.S. can send in terms of military or financial aid to help at this time? Well, the U.S. has already approved uh, $3.7 billion plus uh, to move into Israel. I put forward legislation earlier to replenish the Iron Dome. I'm going to be bringing that legislation back to the floor. There are a number of things that we can do, but the most important thing that we can do, Joe, is to step back and show our moral support for Israel and let them get at this root of terror, which is Hamas. They need to exterminate this. And I'm very, very displeased with some of the message that we've heard coming from our own State Department. And you mentioned, uh, you just played Secretary Blinken's comments. One of the things that Secretary Blinken leaves out is the role of Iran. And the administration has been somewhat silent on this, except they tacitly admit Iran's role when they say now they're going to freeze the $6 billion. But it's far more than $6 billion that we're talking about. Since the Biden administration came into office, they've looked the other way. They failed to enforce the sanctions on Iran. When I was ambassador to Japan, it was my job to get the Japanese to stop buying Iranian crude. In the previous administration, we had choked off the flow of funds to Iran. If you think about Iran as a river sending funds into their proxies like Hezbollah and Hamas, those proxies had dried up. They were running out of money. Today, they're flush because Iran has been allowed to bring in estimates are as high as $80 billion of excess revenues from illegal petroleum sales. The Biden administration looking the other way, not enforcing the sanctions. In fact, they're enforcing these sanctions the same way they're enforcing our border right now. It's pathetic. $10 Senator. billion dollars that we know this administration okayed going from Iraq to Iran earlier this year. This is a big, big problem when we're funding the greatest sponsor of terror, and this is what we're getting as a result. Well, of course, Senator, the admi administration maintains that to this point they do not have concrete evidence that Iran was directly involved in this attack. In fact, we, it's our understanding that the administration has gotten intelligence that suggests senior members within Iran were surprised at the attack over the weekend. So keeping that in mind, but you referenced the, the sanctions on Iran. and we I would just like to interrupt there. This Bloomberg. administration has been infiltrated. We know the reports about this administration whom, being sir? infiltrated. By, by Rob Malley and by the uh, Iranian Experts Initiative, the influences that Iranian government wanted to put into our own administration at the highest levels of the State Department and DOD. So I don't really trust the competency of this administration and their intelligence right now on this subject. Well, what intelligence do you have, Senator? Because we've been hearing about this a lot. The, the Secretary of Defense actually spoke to this today, Lloyd Austin. Surely you appreciate the view of the Secretary who said that while there is a history here, and he did acknowledge that, of Iran sponsoring terror in the region. They simply don't have the smoking gun or the documents that connect the dots on this. What do you know? <laughs> then why are they cutting off the $6 billion right now? Why are they freezing that? They're talking out well, of both sides of the Well, there's been calls to right do now. that from, from Congress. You're pleased to see that, I'm guessing, right? I, I certainly am. I think this is the right direction. We should go back to the policies that we had in place before that were working. Those are severe economic sanctions on Iran. That will choke off the flow of funds that enable Hamas to do this. Look, I'm not making any defense of Hamas at all. This is a terrorist organization, and Israel has every right to defend itself. The Biden administration took too many days to come forward and say this. Their first comments were to, to, to step back, to, to not retaliate. Uh, the Secretary of State, I understand, was calling for a ceasefire before the Israeli government even had a chance to situate itself and respond to this. They have terror on their soil. This is a massive terror attack. We need to allow them to do this. We need to step back and give them the room to do it and the moral support. Senator, when you talk about intensifying sanctions potentially on Iran, and you specifically referenced mm. oil, which is being produced in Iran and flowing out of it, we know a lot of it is going to China. There's a difficulty in enforcing yes. sanctions on oil that is going to China. Is that the, the best mechanism at this point? And do you worry about the ramifications for global energy markets, also keeping in mind your seat on the banking committee? Well, let's talk about the global energy mar markets, because I heard the National Security Council spokesman talk about the need to balance those markets. That's why they've looked the other way on sanctions. The best way to deal with this is to end the war on domestic energy in the United States of America. They precipitated this problem, and now they're going to terrorists to deal with it, looking to nations like Iran to sell illegal oil to keep the markets, quote, balanced, go to visit Venezuela and let them do this. This is preposterous. The Biden administration needs to look inward and stop this war on domestic energy. That has a great deal to do with this right now. Well, Senator, let's just talk about this for a moment, because uh, you clearly are upset with the Biden administration. Uh, surely you don't think the Biden administration is somehow a, a sponsor of terrorism. Aren't the, the talking points here, the rhetoric getting a little hot? 
Well, I would tell you this, and I, I was early on seeing this when I came into the administration. When I'm sorry, when I came into the into the Senate uh, and saw this administration come into office, and immediately began to renegotiate with Iran. We had Iran at a point where we were essentially choked them out of their economic means to sponsor terror. This administration comes in and starts immediately appeasing Iran. We saw what happened in the Obama administration with the appeasement strategy. In 2014, 2015, you know, the violence coming out of Gaza was immense. 2021, when Biden's back in, we had the 11-day war again. Now we have this. The flow of funds matters. The fact that the Biden administration put someone like Rob Malley, who is compromised, has now lost his security clearances, has been kicked out of the State Department without pay, is under FBI investigation, that should tell you that there's a deep, deep problem here. This administration has made a massive mistake trying to negotiate with Iran. And by looking the other way on the sanctions and allowing them to enrich themselves, they have, again, widened the river and expanded these tributaries in a way that is an enriched okay, Hamas and other allies. I appreciate other your proxies. view on that. We just, we just want to be accurate about what's happening, that the, the funds have been frozen here, and the administration has, has had some pretty Only tough rhetoric about Only $6 billion of the funds, Iran. to be clear, Joe. Okay. Only $6 billion of That's the funds. That's been the Again, call from Congress the at way. this point. So, so just, just to understand, Senator, you've been talking about the Biden administration for the balance of our conversation. What do you want to see yes, Congress yes. deliver to Israel that will help? Well, the first thing they need to do is put in place my legislation. We're, we're going to come back and replenish Iron Dome. But the most importantly, the legislation I brought forward in the last Congress, which had it been signed then, had my Democrat colleagues joined me, they would have had to bring every one of the sanctions relief measures to the Congress and vote them up or down. Would the $10 billion have been released? By, you know, would we have okayed the $10 billion from Iraq to Iran? I doubt it. Certainly not the $6 billion that has gone for the hostages. And we would require the enforcement of the sanctions that were in place. And again, the estimates are as high as $80 billion of revenues from illegal petroleum sales because the Biden administration just refuses to enforce the sanctions. So that would be very important. We need to step back and stop fueling Israel's enemy, which is Israel's sworn enemy is Iran. And this administration has allowed them to gain the resources to fund their proxies like Hamas and Hezbollah.